Hello everyone, so this is GS Mains paper 2, September 2017, part 2. Okay, so we have done up until 6 topic, right? Sorry, 5 topic, right? So this will be the 6 topic. And what is the 6 topic? 6 topic is appalling state of Indian public healthcare system. Why this extreme word has been used? There is a reason for it. So deaths in Gorakhpur and Farukhabad district reflect the appalling state of public health. All these cases, they are time and again happening. It's not a one-time occurrence, right? So according to latest global burden of disease study, India has 154th rank, much below China, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. Bangladesh is doing better than us in open defecation. They are doing better than us in this global burden, right? Now first of all, one more thing. What is global burden of disease? Who publishes it? This is important from prelims point of view also, right? So who publishes it? Remember, no WHO, no other institutes. It is published by a research institute of US, which is funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So remember, independent institution, which is, is the one which publishes global burden of disease study, right? No WHO, no other institute, right? Fine. Now the thing is, let's talk about health. Health is a, which kind of a subject? State subject, center subject, or it lies in, what do you say, union list, state list, or concurrent list. It lies in state list. So, though state is a health subject, states reducing their healthcare spending efforts in relation to total government spending. So, instead of increasing the health, means what do you say, healthcare budget, what, what different states are doing? They are reducing it. And what is an example for it? Example is, number of primary health centers went down from 3,808 in 2002 to 3,497 in 2015 in UP. That is, again, it was, in UP, number of primary health centers was approximately 3,800 in 2002. Now it has reduced to approximately 3,500 in 2015. This, this is showing the paling state and that's why we are witnessing such kind of Gorakhpur cases and everything, right? Now let time and again we have talked about it means not I, but you must have heard about Cuba. You always talk about Cuba, that in Cuba this is happening, that is happening. But remember one thing, it's not like people who are doing healthcare or who are implementing healthcare projects are idiot. See, the thing is, Cuba, whenever you are comparing India with Cuba, you have to understand the size. What is the size of Cuba and what is the size of India? India is a huge state, humongous state, right? So not all the things which are being done in Cuba can be done here, right? But yeah, we can. Uh, what do you say? Learn from them because their situation was same as India in 1956, 1950s. So let's talk about it. So the thing is, healthcare is a right in Cuba, and with an infant mortality rate of 4.2 per thousand births, in births, this socialist country is among top three performers in the world. Right? Fine. So what is the mortality rate there? 4.2 per thousand births, much much. What do you say? Less than our country. But the thing is, it was not always like this. If the situation in Cuba was same as as in India in 1950s. So in 1950s, both both means both we and Cuba were at the same level. But transformation happened as it developed the healthcare system based on preventive medicine and not curative care. Here we talk more about curative. When we face a disease and then we think about disease, no, that is not thing that is not done actually in healthcare. You have to be preventive rather than curative, and that's what they have done. They have focused more on the preventive aspect rather than curative aspect. Fine. So this is about a paling state of Indian public healthcare system. Do remember that UP example because that will come handy. You can refer to it. And ranking also. Global burden of disease ranking. India has 154th rank. Okay, so the next topic is Down syndrome. We are number one in TB. We are number one in Down syndrome. So all these things again. But even then we will not increase our GDP. Means GDP contribution to healthcare sector, right? So again, this is topic 12 and 13. That is vulnerable sections and issues related to health. Fine. Now the thing is, India is home to largest number of people with Down syndrome. And why this Down syndrome is in is in news? Because first India International Down syndrome conference happened in Delhi. So again, it can come in prelims also. Ki where it happened? Because now prelims has become such that these SSC level questions can come in UPSC, right? So you never know. So first International Down syndrome conference happened in Delhi. No offense to SSC. SSC is a very nice exam, but yeah, the question, the level of UPSC is deteriorating year after year. But again. Because uh, the thing is, everybody is competing it, right? Even if it is deteriorating, it doesn't, if people will be getting selected, right? So again, you have to stoop to that particular level if UP, UPSC is decreasing that level, right? So again, first inter India International Down Syndrome Cap uh, Conference happened in Delhi. Now, now, first of all, let's understand what is Down, Down Syndrome, whether it is caused by a TB virus or something like that, or is it a genetic disorder? So it is a genetic disorder. So Down Syndrome, which is also uh, abbreviated as DS or DNS, it is also known as trisomy 21. What is the other name? Trisomy 21. And it is a giant genetic disorder caused by the presence of 
or or part of a third copy of chromosome 21 fine and it is typical again we don't need to do phd just understand it is a uh, genetic disorder and it is caused by the presence of all or part of a third copy of chromosome 21 and it is typically associated with delayed physical growth characteristic facial features and mild to moderate intellectual disability now what is the issue the issue is government does not provide any medical support to children with this condition what is the second issue the second issue is there is no insurance company which covers this down syndrome disorder so that is the whole thing down syndrome fine Okay, now let's talk about privacy verdict, right? It is a new Simon again, but the thing is, what, what, what this particular article is saying? This article is saying something very important. Now, what is this privacy verdict? This can become a part of basic structure or first topic where where there is a talk about Indian Constitution of GS Paper Two, and it can also be a part of topic six, that is judiciary, right? So the thing is, some constitutional uh, scholars have hastened to view privacy verdict as making the Supreme uh, Supreme Court a co-governor of the nation. They are saying that by saying that this privacy is a fundamental right they are supreme court is doing nothing but becoming a co-governor of the nation or in other words they are just trying to say that it is an example of judicial overreach but it is not like that why this verdict is actually a sublime oration on human dignity that is what article is saying very nice lines just remember it or write it somewhere that verdict is actually a sublime oration on human dignity an earlier decision in adm jabalpur term the constitutional aberration so like there were certain controversial decisions by the supreme court adm jabalpur was one of them and it is sometimes considered as one of the most controversial decision of supreme court so the thing is they are saying that adm jabalpur was an aberration but now right to privacy has restored people's faith in supreme court verdict right so it is a sublime oration on human dignity now what happened in adm, ADM jabalpur in simple words it closed the door of judiciary for citizen during emergency it said that dude during emergency we cannot help you It, it's it's up to executive to decide what they have to do with you. You cannot come to our court. It's it's a simple word. It it is actually a verdict on habeas corpus. So do read about that particular date. If you want, you can read about the idiom jabal pur also. We'll discuss it because it will come. It will come time and again. Don't worry about it. Fine. So let's move on to the next topic. India, China, Japan, the random. Very important. Very 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 important. Very high probability that one question will be coming on this this year. So the thing is again topic 15 to 19 IR. Uh, See what is happening. Japan is keen to export its high-speed train technology along with rolling stock. Rolling stock means locomotives and all those things, right? So, but the thing is, it's fine. They are they are very keen to export high train technology. They are giving us loan at very very cheap rate, right? In fact, even zero percent rate, much zero point one percent, right? So, why the thing is, while India is Japan's, while Japan is India's largest donor and third largest provider of FDI, foreign direct investment, bilateral trade has steadily declined since. 2013. Remember, because everything looks hunky dory right now, na. That yeah, India Japan is doing this, this, this. But there is, you have to write downside also, na. You cannot write all positive points. So what is the negative point regarding India Japan thing? That the bilateral trade is decreasing since 19, 2013. And now let's compare the means bilateral trade between India Japan, India China, and Japan China. So India China, India Japan, Japan bilateral trade is standing at 13.61 billion dollar right now. What is what about India China? It is seventy one billion dollars, right? So it is approximately five point five times. So India China trade is approximately five point five times that of India Japan trade. And what about Japan China? It is two seventy nine billion dollars. So which is approximately twenty times the trade which is happening between India and Japan, and approximately four times the trade which is happening between India and China. So that is the case. So the, the trade component of India Japan is very very minuscule, right? Okay, so there are multiple articles, and I have, I mean, so what is it? Clubbed it all together. So let's talk about right, India-Japan alignment again. So the emerging India-Japan alignment sets stage for the reordering of Asian strategic landscape. Now China has not launched Belt and Road Initiative (BRI) to create a new trading infrastructure that reflects China's centrality as the largest trading nation, right? And the thing is, what is making BRI more important is, or what is it? Most uh, dominating or more intriguing is. BRI is complemented by a growing Chinese naval presence in Indian Ocean. Now, since 1988, India has followed a consistent, consistent China policy. Again, this is very important. If you write it, it you will fetch good marks. What is consistent China policy? So, consistent China policy was based on 
putting aside the boundary dispute and developing other aspects of the relationship in expectation that this would create mutual trust and enable a boundary settlement. However, the gap between India and China has grown both in economic and military terms and with it has emerged a more assertive China. So that has happened. It has not bear fruit and it has not resulted, what he said, it resulted in something which India was hoping, right? So after Duklam, finally a consensus that old China policy does not serve our national interest and a review is long overdue. So till up, up, up until Doklam, we are following this consistent China policy, but now it, there's a very high probability that this will take a, means this will be getting, uh, what do you say, going under change or going, this will be seeing some change, right? So apart from bullet train, nuclear agreement, etc., another major initiative between India and Japan is a recently concluded Asia-Africa Growth Corridor to build connectivity for which Japan has committed $30 billion and India $10 billion. This will add a critical dimension to the global partnership between two countries. So we are not confining ourselves to only bullet trains and everything. We are again expanding our horizons, which is good for us, which is good for both the countries. But the thing is, again, how a strategic partnership needs stronger economic ties, as we have discussed, and we have discussed the figures also. So bilateral trade needs to improve. Mr. Modi's actus policy with Mr. Abe's free and open India Indo-Pacific strategy sets the stage for the reordering of Asian strategic landscape. So that is the whole thing. Fine. Now let's talk about the last topic for today, which is tuberculosis elimination by 2025. Similar to Down syndrome, we are number one in tuberculosis also. So India, but the thing is, Indian government is serious about it, at least on paper. So Indian government has a target of eliminating tuberculosis by 2025, right? But the thing is, not only India showed the highest TB burden in the world, with over 2 million of 10 million cases reported here, it also accounts for maximum drug resistance, that is DR patients, nearly 1, 1, 30,000 or 1 lakh 30,000 people do not respond to first line drugs, right? In most cases, DRTB patients, that is drug resistant TB patients, need two drugs, that is delaminide and beraquilin, right? But what is happening? As of now, India has 3,500 courses of beraquilin and 400 courses of delaminide. You can note down these data. India has 3,500 cases of beraquilin and 400 cases of delaminide. Both donations from US Ed and Japanese pharmaceutical company Otsuka respectively. So it's like they are giving us donation. That's why we have it. We are not buying it, right? So we have this beraquilin and uh, delaminide from US Ed and Japanese pharmaceutical company Otsuka, right? to treat nearly 100,000 patients who are resistant to first-line medicines. So we have 3,500 courses of bedaquiline and 400 courses of delaminide and how many patients we need to treat? 100,000 patients. So you do the maths yourself, right? So the thing is, what is the thing? Are we serious? It doesn't look like it. These figures are not suggesting that government is very serious. So what we need to do? We need to put money where its mouth is, right? If government is serious, it should ensure domestic production of delaminate and bedaquiline instead of running national program based on donations. Fine. So that is the whole scenario. Fine, fine, fine. So I'll keep until here only. And in the next video, we'll come to GS Mains Paper 2. GS Mains Paper 3 is very important. And in September, lots and lots of important news are there. So I think that will, GS Mains Paper 3 will take five videos, but GS Mains Paper 2 will be done in the next video only. Thank you.